Hey there, and welcome back. So, today we're going to talk about Sprite Priority. What is it, and how does it work? Well, I'm going to show you in this video, so let's get to it. Okay, so first let's look at this little guy from the intro. This little ghost floating by the screen. So, I don't know if you noticed it in the intro or not, but if you can uh, see, he uh, is behind the trees right now. Now he's behind the flowers and the grass, and he's, he's behind all of these um, background things. So, there are basically two kinds of sprite priority. This is one of those. The sprite uh, appears behind the background graphics or the characters so um, we need to uh, understand something uh, he appears behind the trees the grass the flowers but he doesn't appear behind the black background that's because the black background uh, that's the, the background color that I have defined in memory address D021. The, the address where we define what background color to use uh, on the background area. So he won't appear behind that. But he, if we set him up uh, to appear behind background graphics, he will appear behind all the other colors or the other characters. So let's see if I can, there, I stopped him. So now he stopped halfway behind the tree. And maybe you can see these small dots here. That's because when I drew this tree here, I made some black dots here on the side. Now since they are black, they are the background color, the sprite won't be, may appear behind those. He will only appear behind this brown color. So, that's just something to keep in mind when you're using this. If you're defining a sprite to appear behind the background, well, he will only appear behind uh, all the, uh, the colors uh, that are not the background color. I hope that makes sense. So now, let's see um, what makes this possible. So here I have eight ghosts. I've used all, used all the sprite slots here, so I have eight sprites. Now here in memory address D1001B, uh, we have several of these types of uh, memory addresses, where each bit in here uh, represents a sprite. Each bit is an on-off switch for a sprite. So like we've seen before in other cases, um, if I switch, uh, if I change this bit to zero, then sprite zero here will not appear behind the background. Right now, they're all set to appear behind the background. So let's change um, bit zero here from one to zero. Look at this little guy now. I changed it to zero and now he appears in front of the background. So let me do that with the other ones here. It's a little hard to see with this red ghost here, but now I'm gonna set this one to a zero. And he appears in front of the background. Next guy, whoops, there we go. So now all the bits are set to zero and all the sprites appear in front of the background. And of course, we can uh, set these to whatever combination we want. Some behind the background, some in front of the background. So, uh, like we've seen before, uh, to use this uh, kind of technique, you need to know about bit manipulation. Basically, we're talking about using AND and OR. ANDing and ORing the bits inside a byte like this. 
to switch on or off or change a bit from 1 to 0, 0 to 1. So this um, is just a very simple little thing where you can just define what sprites are behind the background, what sprites are in front of the background. So this is one type of sprite priority. Should the, uh, the sprite appear in front of or behind the background characters? And like I said, it will never appear behind the defined background color in D1021, which in my case here is black. So this is, uh, like I said, this is just one type of sprite priority. So here's uh, a code example of how I do this. I'm working with the memory address D01B because that's where these bits are set on and off. So uh, here I have made a little routine where I'm reading the keyboard. So when I'm pressing zero, um, I'm enabling or disabling, or sorry, I'm, I'm make sure, making sure that spread zero appears behind the background or in front of the background. And I do that for all eight sprites. Now here's something we haven't talked a lot about before. We have talked about AND and OR for logical operators. So when we're using OR or ORA, we're setting bits, individual bits in here. And when we're using AND, we can clear bits and so on. But here's uh, another one. It's called EOR, exclusive OR. Now this one is a, a little different. Because uh, when we're using exclusive OR, like I'm doing here, it will invert the bit. So for example, here is what happens if I press zero on the keyboard. If I press zero on the keyboard, I'm setting bit this bit to either one or zero. Uh, so it's gonna be the opposite of what it was. So when I press zero on the keyboard, and there, let's say there's a one in here, if I press zero, then that one goes to a zero. And if it's a zero, it goes to a one. That's how exclusive OR works. It just in inverts the bit like that. So I'm using that in combination with this memory address D01B. But we also have another kind of sprite priority. So let's look at that now. The other kind of sprite priority is um, how the sprites relate to each other. If one sprite goes in front of another sprite, which sprite will appear in, uh, in front and which will appear in the back? Well, this is uh, a set um, priority list. So sprite zero, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost like a mesh here, but sprite zero will always be in front and sprite seven will always be at the back. So here you can see we go from sprite zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to seven, and they're layered based on their number. So like I said, sprite zero will always be here in front. And then we have sprite one, sprite two, sprite three. So we can't change this. This is just how it's set up. So um, whenever you need a sprite to always be in front of the other sprites, you should probably use sprite zero because that's always uh, gonna be in, in front of all the other sprites. Now on the opposite end, if you want the sprite to always be behind all of the other sprites, you need to use sprite 7 for that. So there's a technique we can use when we know about this. And it's called sprite overlay. Sprite overlay is a technique that uh, it gives uh, sprites more color and more detail. Now what's happening here is that we're placing one sprite in front of the other. Now, usually this is done by placing a high resolution sprite on top of a multicolor sprite. So if we look at this little guy, he has smooth edges, 
but he also has a few colors. So I um, made a, a duplicate here, but I, I stretched it in both directions so we can see a little better. So all the black that you see here, that's just the outline. So that's one sprite in high resolution. And it appears on top of another sprite. Now the other sprite, that's these colors that you see. Gray, light red, and light blue. So here I'm actually displaying four sprites. I have two sprites here and two sprites here. But like I said, one is placed on top of the other. So if you want to use this technique in a game, we have to make sure that those two sprites always move perfectly in sync. So if you want a, uh, a guy to move a character like, like this to move right, then both sprites need to move right at the exact same time. You don't want one sprite to lag behind the other. Uh, in fact, this technique is used in some games like Rambo First Blood Part 2 but only for the player character because of course by using this technique we use we're using two of the sprite slots for one character like this now we always have techniques like um, sprite multiplexing but usually you don't want to use this technique for all sprites because we really just have eight sprite slots so sprite overlay let's look at how we do this in sprite pad so sprite pad oh actually has uh, built in support for sprite overlay now, the way you do this may seem a little counterintuitive um, you actually draw the multicolor sprite first, like we see here. This is the multicolor sprite. Now, it doesn't have a lot of detail right now, but that's the point. Because on the very next sprite here, this is the outline. So this is the high resolution sprite. So this sprite will appear on top of this sprite. Now the great thing here in SpritePad, like I said, SpritePad has built-in support for this. So here on the multicolor sprite, I click Has Overlay. And when I click that, it looks like this. So now I can see what uh, the character will actually look like by placing this on top of the other. So, um, like I said, perhaps it might be a little counterintuitive that you have to draw this color guy on the first one and then the outline on the second one. But once you get used to that, it's really not a problem. But as long as you click this checkbox, has overlay, you will see how it looks, what it looks like. And by doing this, we can draw whatever we want and we can see both uh, sprites at the same time so this is uh, a great uh, functionality of sprite pad if you want to use this technique but like I said if you're using this in a game the sprite moving routine has to be, be designed in a way that the, both of these sprite graphics both or both of the sprites move at the exact same um, time. They have to be perfectly in sync. Now let's just look at a quick code example for how I did it in the, the example. Now those were not moving sprites, so this is just a super simple example to drive home the point. But like I said, if you want the sprites to move, it, it becomes a little bit more advanced. Uh, but uh, here I'm setting uh, X coordinate 150 for both sprite 0 and sprite 2. So um, 
I'm sorry, sprite 0 and sprite 1. Uh, here's the X position for sprite uh, 0, and here's the X position for sprite 1. Uh, so I, I do that for the um, multicolor sprite and the high resolution overlay sprite. So like you see, I have set um, one specific X position and one specific Y position for a pair of sprites in every example here. So it's just a very simple thing, but like I said, just to drive home the point, if you want to use sprite overlay, you have to make sure that those X and Y positions match perfectly. But also, uh, this is important to remember, we need to set what sprite pointer index to use. Now in this case, I have a, a little player and a, a, a big player, so they both use the uh, the same graphics, but um, like we saw in SpritePad, uh, you know about the sprite point indexes. So the first one, um, in my case, I have sprites at memory address 2000 down here. So in that case, the first sprite index is hexadecimal 80, and the second one is 81. So I need to set those correct sprite pointer indexes. Again, it's nothing new, but I just wanted to show you. Um, yeah. And of course we need to set multicolor in D01C for the um, multicolor to, to make the, the uh, one of the sprites multicolor. So anyways. Uh, this was just a short little episode to talk a little bit about sprite priority. Um, mainly we have two different types of sprite priority and I just wanted to quickly show you a little bit about that. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.